it is a blessing to know that all things work together for good.
this receive amen her at this time. i 
children that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation.
his own will. Let us know that he is God. And we are thankful for the goodness of God. And as we celebrate the life of my dear brother, amen, Rap Wayne Hawkins, amen. I'd like to say before we go further that uh, I grew up with him uh, here in Albany. Uh, we lived on Monroe Street, and I think they lived on Coleman. Oh, yeah. uh, we, we, we were deep right there at Mike grocery store. Oh, yeah. uh, we used to hang out <laughs> right there at Mike grocery store. Yeah. Hey, Amen. He was a great friend of my first cousin, James Whaley. Yeah. And that's how I met him. Hey, Amen. Yeah. And he was a watch out for us. We were much younger then, and he was a little older. And they would watch out for us. Amen. Amen. And uh, I thank God for that memory. Amen. Knowing who this great man. Amen. And uh, he left. Amen. Uh, a mark on my life. In that. Amen. He would always try to watch out for us. When we would go to the night grocery store. Amen. Yes. And make sure that we got across the street safely, yeah, yeah. those type of things, and I never forget that, amen. amen. And uh, I'm so thankful, amen, for the opportunity to know him, amen. And uh, at this time, we are, amen, uh, ready to, amen, uh, to have reflections, and uh, we're asking that we would take three minutes and Please uh, govern yourselves according to the program that has been written. At this time, amen, the floor is now open that you may reflect upon the life of Brother Hawkins. Amen. Bad grade on my report card, and I got in trouble, of course. 
And I said, I made a comment, I'm not going to college anyway. And uh, so I think my mother, he came over our house, we were living uh, on with and he said, she told him what I said, he said, Daddy, you said that? And I said, yeah. He said, go to college. I'm, he said, I wish I could go to college. You go to college. And that stuck with me. And when I grew up, I did have, still had that desire to go to college and finish. And, you know, it was just his encouragement. Even though he, you know, missed out on the opportunity, he still encouraged me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share my, uh, some memories of my uncle. Um, one, some of you, if you have a program, you see that um, picture we were at Black Ears, which is, I know my sister Lee is one of my favorite parents for I see at home. And, and so my uncle and dad, I think it's probably about 15 of us or 20 of us there. So although it's only she and I have pictured with him, it was a whole bunch of us um, there that day. And it hasn't been that long ago just to be able to share some love with each other. But um, my uncle Ralph, in my opinion, when I look back on it, had on a song of my own, he was spoiled. I think he was very spoiled, rotten from what I could see as a little child. <laughs> But I can remember one day we were on Corner Street, Bishop uh, Cochran, we were Corner Street, and then when you mentioned um, Matt Grocery Store, we couldn't do no wrong because everybody knew the little hawks. They were called, um, Mr. at the Matt Store, he called us little hawks. And we knew what that meant. We were hawkins and we had a legacy to uphold. And I uh, remember one time at the house, my uncle thought he was going to disrespect my grandma. My grandma did not play by the zero. And I remember her, she was probably four foot nine with osteoporosis or something that we've come to find out now. But if he was six foot one or two, she stood up in a chair and got him, got him by his collar. And, and told him, you know, disrespect me. And he's like, yes, ma'am. Knowing that physically, he probably could have overpowered her, but he had so much respect for her when she took him by that collar, she got up in that chair. And that point, that let me know I don't disrespect grandma. So he taught me some great lessons. But um, he would be pissed. Um, you know, when my mom and my sister would go down there, I'd tell them to FaceTime me a couple of times. They forgot to just FaceTime me. But um, just knowing that he knew he was loved, even in his last days, he knew that he was loved by the family. And I look around here, it's probably about 50 of us here. And not that his friends, don't know that he's passed on, but at the end of the day, family is everything. Yes. And so we're here um, to show our love and salute to our Uncle Ralph and brother, whoever he is to you.
And so I touched him, and the nurse brought some uh, pudding, and I tried to feed him the pudding, and he did take it in, but it came back out. You know, it came back up. So I, I, she said, he likes water, he likes cold water. So well, I put the straw in the water, and he couldn't suck it right, he couldn't use the straw. So the nurse said, I'll get you a spoon. So she got a spoon, and I got the spoon and went in the cup, and boy, he, did he get that. He was trying to do what I asked him to do. And I said, are you hurting? He said, do you give us a sign that was he wasn't hurt? And he said, what? And then he started moaning and groaning. And I, and I said, are you hurting? He said, he just said it like that. And the nurse said, you know, the Spirit of the Lord says, God understands. And boy, did I start speaking in tongues. And then he, by that time, I had anointed him. And the nurse, I didn't know the nurse was saying, and she spoke in the tongues too. How many of y'all know what speaking in tongues are? But God told me to take that oil. I anointed him. And when I anointed him, I said, say Jesus. Yeah. He, he said, the first Jesus, he said, Jesus. And then I said, two more times. And the last two times, he couldn't say this us, because of his body spirit, he said, Jesus. Jesus. And I said, you know Jesus? He was doing like that. The Bible said, you know Jesus. He was in the past and said, and do you know three days later, he died on the fifth. He died. A day before my, he died, a day after my birthday. My birthday was on the 4th, and he died the 5th. And I look back at it, I said, Lord, you didn't let my brother die as a member of my birthday. And I thank the Lord for that. And, and I was telling the nurse, I said, you know, when I saw the predicament he was in and he was dying, I said, my mom said, all of her children are going to be saved. And said, we're going to be saved before it's everlasting too late. Now, see, I didn't know because I started not to pay attention to the nurse call that we needed to go up, up there. But Daryl said, Mama, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you. Let's go. And went up there and saw the predicament he was in. I'm glad I went because if I hadn't known, I wouldn't have seen my brother in that state. I would not have known he died peacefully. He died peacefully. My mama said, and the nurse said, he told me that. I said, my mama said, all our children are going to be saved. And Ralph, because he was the last one to draw in. People know Ralph how he knew the map of all Pitt, Georgia, all over this place. And, and my brother died peacefully. And I want the world to know that he is in peace. And my mom's prophecy, she was, my mom was, was uh, the mother of the church in the Baptist church, right? And she was speaking in tongues. And did you know what? They would, most times, they would take my mama out because they didn't understand and she was speaking in tongues. So we got to learn to know that speaking in tongues is the heavenly language and that we all need to have it in Jesus' name. So listen, I want you to know, and I know, you can make it.
and Jesus look at me and say, you need to say something too, like me. <laughs> After she got through, I didn't want to say nothing. But anyway, I, there are a lot of memories I had around. We were the last two of my mother's children. And uh, it brought back a memory that I made. I thought about um, when he was little. I don't know if he was about five or six or how old he was. But anyway, we had gone to, uh, it wasn't night store this time. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was uh, the person's store on the corner of Madison. And it was a lady lived across the street from the store, and Ralph and Mel Charles Terrell, we met with, with me and Ralph. We went to the store, bought some stuff. And when we on our way back, Mel and Ralph decided they were gonna go through the lady's yard and walk on her pavement. <laughs> anyway, they pulled some, some uh, leaves off some of the branches of uh, flowers in her yard. And that lady came out there, and she said, what y'all do? She grabbed Melvin, grabbed Melvin, and was putting him in the switch. And she was, she, she, she told Ralph, he was next. I said, Ralph, I said, run, man, run, man, run, man, run, man. Run, man. <laughs> we ran home. <laughs> he didn't, he wasn't trying to be disobedient that day, because that day was whipping. Anyway, that's, that was just a comfort thing. To, he remind, it reminded me of when we were little. And um, me and my daughter, Bergina, used to go up there and visit him when he was in Midway. And we took Bibles and we'd read the daily bread with him and read scripture with him. His, uh, one of his uh, ch uh, chap chaplain was coming and visit him during his last days. And he called me and told me, he said, you let the family know that he was a good man. He said he, when he would come in to read to him the scriptures and stuff, so he would turn off the TV so he could listen and stay focused. And then when, when they got through, when he got through reading the scriptures, then both of them would discuss it. Discuss me and say what he, what he learned from it. And then he would let the minister, the chaplain, say what he wanted to say and let him know what the word meant to him. But anyway, he said, let your family know that he was a good man and he loved it. He believed that he loved the Lord. And I would we believe that he is saved. And he's gone, he's in the arms of the Lord. I ain't gonna sing this, not this time. We're gonna we're not gonna sing. We're gonna sing, we're gonna sing the family.
Next, everyone, please stand to your feet. As I present this song and introduce to others, <clears throat> not other than, amen, Bishop Derek Thomas. Let's receive him now with a hearty amen. I said, 
said, you got to remind yeah. yourself. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. So you need to tell me I'm saved and I still got to be afraid? No, the Bible says God did not give me a spirit of fear. Sleep on. 
Ralph Hawkins out of this world. He commit his body to the earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection of our Lord and in the last days of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming and glorious majesty to judge the world, earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him will be changed and made like unto the glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. We repeat the Lord's Prayer after me. Our Father, our Father, Father who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Who trespass against us. Who trespass against us. And deliver us. And deliver us. Sorry. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. The power. The power. And the glory. And the glory. Henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they shall rest from all their labors, and thy works do follow them. Bow your heads for the benediction. Father, we thank you and we bless you. May the God of all peace once again comfort our hearts. We pray, God, because you are an eternal shepherd, that you would be with us as we leave this place. Father, we love you so very much for all the things that you've done. Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and ask that you would be with our family. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is my conclusion, sir, Mr. Ralph Wayne Hawkins. The staff management, all the Robert Joseph Montreal, deeply mindful of the trust and confidence in which you have placed in us. We consider the whole of this service has been in every way, satisfactory and comforting to you during your time of song. We celebrate the birthday of Ms. Naomi Carroll, since our staff members, Mr. Wayne Burley, Reverend Johnny Williams, Reverend Alan Brown, and Ronald Smith. For your thirst, we have water and juice provided here today for the family. Please feel free to take one of several.